In recent years, many Wall Street institutions have exerted extraordinary influence in Washington's corridors of power, but Citigroup has risen above the others. Its grip over economic policy making in the executive branch is unprecedented. At 23 years of age, she was trapped in a never-ending cycle of American poverty, attending college, trying to make a better life, working two low-paying jobs, and one day posted an essay online about her life. That post went viral. What followed was her eye-opening experiences in the book Hand to Mouth, Living in Bootstrap America, and the realization by many that our government and many of our citizens have zero idea how close many people are to living into that poverty line every single day, and how many do it every day. All right, let's welcome the author to, Mid to Midpoint, Linda Torado joins us today. Linda, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Ed. And really quickly, I will say thank you so much for the compliment. Um, I was 31 when I wrote the piece, not 23, <laughs> although I will take 23. Okay, then I'll tell you what. Then because it is the holiday season, always as a lady, I will stay with 23 just to go ahead and make sure that it makes you happy oh, and things are good. Oh, you're the sweetest. <laughs> Don't worry about it. People around here are still saying that I look young for 112, so you're good. Uh, let's look at the <laughs> United States government right now and the people in Washington. As I mentioned much earlier in the show, there seems to be a thinking process from our lawmakers that when they gather and Congress is back in session here, that they want to help the middle class. We hear that over and over again, the middle class making it work. In your opinion and from what you've experienced, do the lawmakers in Washington even know who the middle class is and what they experience on a day-to-day -day basis? I uh, would say that anybody who spends four hours a day fundraising and is capable of raising enough money to win a seat in Congress is probably fairly out of touch with what it is to work in a restaurant. Um, now, that said, what is the middle class? Because if you ask somebody at 35,000, they're going to say they're middle class. You ask somebody at 300,000, they're going to say they're middle class too. So it's entirely possible um, that you've got people representing the interests of the middle class. It's just that they're picking and choosing which middle class they're talking about. All right, now let's get down to that. What do they need to focus on? Lawmakers are sitting in Washington. You went through a very specific set of circumstances. So if the people in Washington making the rules, the people in Wall Street who basically take care of all the money 24-7, where do they need to look? What do they need to look at to really get a feel for what it's like maybe being in that middle class and, as you experienced, falling out of that and falling into poverty so easily. I think as a thought exercise, um, I would love to see everybody take all of their degrees off their resumes. I'd love to see people really get down to what the normal level would be. Say a 55-year-old man who's serving in Congress, well, take away all of that resume. Say that you've been a cook, you've been a laborer. Go and try and find a job. Try and find an apartment. See how well that goes for you. And then come back and talk to me about it. Congress has something they call the minimum wage challenge, which is where Congress people try to live just on their food and transportation budgets of the amount that you would have at the at the lower uh, at, the, at the minimum wage and what's interesting to me about that is that they're still wearing the really fancy clothes and they still have a whole crew of staff around behind them they still have people to advise them they have all these resources that they've never even thought of and they think that it's impossible as it is a bunch of them drop out before the end of a single week just trying to make it with food and transportation and when you have that realization you'll understand that 45 million Americans Americans are living like this. The problem isn't any single congressperson refusing to do their duty. The problem is a system that's been set up that has gone a little too far in one direction. It's a great thing to talk about markets and incentives. I would like to incentivize Congress to make things work for all of America and not just the people that they think are going to donate to their campaigns in the next cycle. Is that just it, that we have nothing more than politicians sitting here and all they want, make sure they get the money, make sure they get the cars, make sure they get everything else, and they have absolutely no concern whatsoever, Republican or Democrat, who people are on the ground level? i got about 45 seconds before we take a break. No, I don't think that's true at all. I think they are very concerned. You can look at Paul Ryan's Opportunity Grant. Uh, clearly, he's really concerned. The problem is they don't understand what solutions might work because they're looking at it from the outside. You never see a Burger King worker on a panel on the Budget Committee advising Congress on how to make policy for Burger King workers. Is this a Republican or a Democratic fault, in your opinion? Neither. 
It's equal. It's the entire society. It's a systemic issue. And to play partisan ball with it is to write off half of that 45 million American who actually probably vote for the other guy. We don't look like anything. We're Republicans. We're Democrats. We're non-voters. We're white. We're black. It doesn't matter. 45 million. It's a third of the country. We're all over the place. All right. Now stand by, please. Linda Toronto returns to Midpoint after the break. We'll dig into what's happening at the moment with the next generation of American leaders. We'll talk about Wall Street a little more and how all these leaders could be failing to make the changes they must master in order to break a cycle of poverty. That and so much more coming up right here on Midpoint, where we question everything.